Hello everybody, this is Dr. Francois again, and today I have a very special guest. I have someone that I know very well from Montreal, Canada. Uh, this is Roland Berard that has practiced so many energy healing modality. I am astonished. I am lost uh, among <laughs> all uh, of what you did. So we are going to start right now, uh, dear Roland. So uh, how can you define who you are? Because you have done so many things. I, I think that you started by doing uh, Reiki. Is it? You started to discover Reiki in the 90s. So tell us uh, your yes. story. Wow. Well, you know, after all this, I, I kind of like to call myself a healing facilitator more than anything else. Because as a healer, we're not the ones that do the work. We just create the container in which healing can happen. So where did I start? My gosh. Um, well, I guess in this life, I started as... <laughs> uh, I did a, a long trip, uh, a two-year trip after um, uh, a very difficult event in my life. And uh, I traveled for a couple of years. I went around the world. And uh, I think that, uh, of course, basically, we all have a spiritual nature. We all have a, we're all questing for something. We're all searching. And uh, for me, it was, uh, at the time, I was an engineer when I did this trip. Uh, I took a two-year sabbatical, and I, and I traveled. And I think just going around and meeting people and seeing all of these beautiful places, these different cultures, I think that helped also to open my mind, which is already spiritually oriented. I grew up in a, a religious background in a small town in uh, Manitoba, Canada, in the center. And uh, I was working with, with people uh, as a project manager, engineering, so looking at the projects, uh, helping things to move forward, uh, which I'm quite good at. And, uh, but I was, and I was working with people uh, because I was managing uh, teams and working, interacting with a lot of different yeah, people. But, but engineering is quite far from energy healing. How did you get that? How did you get there? <laughs> I mean, an engineer well, that become a healer, I, it's a, a astonishing. Explain yeah, that. Yeah, uh, I, I think, uh, well, we all have this nature, uh, this curious nature. I've always been curious and open. Uh, I'd like to do many things and, and discover things. and. I think we're it, it, outside of what I've already said in terms of the trip and uh, opening and meeting different cultures. Uh, when, when we moved to Montreal from Manitoba, my children were um, uh, they're very young. They were two and, and seven. And they were having some uh, difficulties. Uh, one was always on antibiotics and the other one was having some uh, difficulties with food allergies. And one of my colleagues who was also an engineer recommended a naturopath that we went to see and they helped them uh, very much in, in that that person helped them a lot which piqued my curiosity and in that office they were also using um, auriculotherapy which is working with the ear uh, pressure points like an acupressure for the ear acupuncture for the ear uh, uh, yeah acupuncture for the ear yeah and um, uh, that got me curious. I took a couple of sessions and uh, kind of enjoyed that. Um, and so my mind started to kind of open up. And um, I was also a musician at the time playing, uh, practicing and learning uh, to play uh, the fiddle. And one day I was sitting down with Raymond, who is my fiddle teacher. And we we're talking about energy and Raymond says, Oh, you know, I kind of believe in that. And then then he said, oh, my wife just took a course uh, of energy healing. And so she uh, came downstairs and she gave me this pamphlet of a Reiki course. Reiki, what's that? <laughs> I had no clue what that was. Yeah. But it was, only, it was only a weekend, right? Reiki is very uh, accessible. So I took the weekend course and uh, still not knowing what I was getting into. But the second day of the course, I had a very strong uh, spiritual experience, which really shook me up, but also was very deep in terms of, of, of its effect. And, uh, and so after that, after taking the level two of Reiki, we can work by distance. And so I started to work with my, my brother-in-law and my nephew who were in Winnipeg, you know, quite, quite far away from Montreal. 
and I was having some interesting results. Um, and uh, eventually I went on to, still working as an engineer, work, went on to take level three and then the master level without knowing what I would do with it. All of a sudden, Reiki master, which I, <laughs> I think is a, you know, it's very uh, big term, you know, master, master, what does that mean? Anyways, I was able to teach. And so my brother-in-law, who was in Winnipeg, just said I was going to have a hip operation replacement. And so I said to him, well, um, you know, he had been one of the persons I had been practicing Ricky with, so he knew what it was. I said, you know, if you take the course, you could uh, treat yourself. You know, you can give yourself uh, some self-healing. And so I went down to Winnipeg, and I gave the weekend course, and my sister was there. And a friend of mine showed me a book from Barbara Brennan because I was talking about chakras and didn't know very much about it. So he showed me this book and, wow, this kind of looks interesting. Hands of Light. So Hands of Light, that's the one, yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so I came back to Montreal and uh, uh, um, my, uh, my partner at the time had bought the second book, which was Light Emerging. Light Emerging. I hadn't, really, <laughs> I hadn't read much of, of it. But this Hands of Light, one day I was walking around uh, in my lunch hour and I went into uh, a bookstore and they had a pile of Hands of Light books sitting there just looking at me and I thought, hmm. So I bought it and then I started reading and it's, you know, everything about you wanted to know about energy and we're afraid to ask. So I really got into this book like big time. And I had started to teach a little bit of the Reiki courses, but uh, only in my spare time. And uh, I noticed that the school, that the, uh, at the end of the, the book, that um, Barbara had a school. Yeah. And, uh, so I, you had to do a weekend workshop before you could attend the school. So I sent away for the information and got it back and, and uh, found out that they had uh, waived the requirement of taking a weekend workshop, which for me would have been a big thing because I would have had to go to the States, it was expensive and all that. And so I got the information and just as we were about to leave for uh, a two week vacation to Newfoundland on a camping trip, so I, brought the, I brought the book with me and I was reading and reading the curriculum from the school. I was getting really excited, you know. And then my partner, uh, Marla, said to me, you know, I think uh, maybe you should go to the school. I think you need to go. Well, that was all I needed. <laughs> so, that, that, that was it. You, that was, that, what was it? I was committed now. I'm very curious. And uh, this was in August. And by September, uh, everything had fallen into place. I had uh, enrolled in the school and I had set up a business so that I could de deduct this for, out of a professional practice and, you know, before taxes and all of that. Everything fell into place with that and um, so I did uh, the school for three years, uh, four years actually, but for three years I was working full time as a project manager. I would take these five weeks off, go to the States uh, five times to the school, learning about energy and uh, um, I, uh, after, after three years of this I was quite um, tired because um, I had two young kids and I was quite involved with their activities and I was playing music and I was uh, going to the school. So I decided to take six months. Right. And, uh, and then after six months, I thought, well, maybe I'd like to try and do this as a, as a profession. You know, I kind of liked, uh, so um, after the, uh, the uh, a few months, I, I decided to look at the possibility of opening an office. And so I did. I rented a space and I started uh, a place where I could teach Reiki as well as practice uh, my brain and healing science. But there was something still missing. Like uh, it was the energy work. Barbara's school is great. You have all kinds of techniques working with people and you really work on yourself during four years. So you're, it was you're, not enough. Well, it wasn't. It didn't give me all the tools I thought I needed to help really help people at a deep level. And, uh, and so I decided to go to the school for another two years to take the advanced uh, program of uh, learning to teach, a teacher training. And at the same time, I had discovered uh, something called Hakombi, which is uh, mindfulness-based assisted self-discovery. And uh, 
when I had taken my six months off, I had gone to Prince Edward Island to visit a colleague and his wife had met Donna Martin, who was uh, very involved in teaching Hakomi all over the world. And uh, we decided to put a group together in Prince Edward Island. So I started that course. And when I discovered Hakomi, I said, wow, this is really great. Uh, you really can help people with this. And uh, so I arranged to bring Hakomi to Montreal. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. For, nine, <laughs> for seven years, I... I organized, I participated. You were Mr. And, you were Mr. Akomi. <laughs> in Montreal. <laughs> and Donna Martin. <laughs> and Donna Wait. Martin. Uh, I have some questions now. Wait. Okay, great. <laughs> too many things. I've been, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> you know, that's perfect. This is what I wanted. Uh, but um, now, uh, I would like you to talk about Uh, as a teacher, you, you can explain to students what is energy for the benefit of the audience. We had some other guests already that gave their, the, not their version, but their, their description. How do you feel energy? How do you sense it's there? How can you describe it for the benefit of the audience? Because, you know, uh, we live in an occidental world and people say, hmm, there is no scientific proof what But Barbara has kind of a very strong scientific ba background and you're also an engineer. So define for the benefit of the audience, what is energy? Okay. I think the best, um, the best reference that we can, we can use is the um, quantum, phys quantum physics. And quantum physics shows us that um, everything is energy that we are mostly empty space, that at a certain level, uh, energy and light, mass and light, they, they're kind of the same things in different forms. And what's really interesting is this uh, theory or, or this proof that two parts of an atom can be light years apart. And when something happens to one, the other one reacts immediately. So we are connected. We are all connected energetically. And the other reference is what we're quite familiar with is, you know, Tai Chi, Qigong, uh, the Qi in, in Chinese, which really is universal energy, which in Reiki is the, the key is the same as the Qi. So it's this universal energy that uh, animates every living thing. And we are energy And our energy system, which we call chakras, there, there are like funnels that kind of uh, capture this energy so we can use it as a human being. Right. And so energy is pervasive everywhere. It's everywhere. And we can learn as a, um, well, everybody can do it. Everybody, whenever you put a hand on somebody, with uh, coming from the heart, you are channeling energy for that person. And so the energy is there and it can be, um, I'll use the word transmitted or offered to somebody else right. through, through, through the hands, even at a distance. And there's a really good book called The Field by Lynn McTaggart, which uh, talks a lot about that and she gives examples of uh, double blind studies where distance healing has worked. Okay. And so, pardon me? I said, yes, I know that's yes. a very good book. Yeah, it's, it's a really good book. And so energy is there and we, if we set our intention to be a clear channel, we can offer it to someone else. And so the healer is basically just the channel and uh, healing is an offering of this energy which has a frequency that is in harmony and it's like offering the other person a template that the person can follow if that's their path mm. so yeah can, can you give us uh, some example of cases that you have and that you could help with energy. Could you help? And how, how could you help these people? 
That's a, that, that's a good question, Francois. Yes. Um, well, healing can have the, a lot of benefits. Uh, it can be a complementary to any other traditional or alternative healing uh, modality. And what people usually feel um, at first is simply a relaxation. You know, people feel relaxed. And um, he, uh, the, the healing template can act on different levels. It can act on the physical level, on the emotional level, on the way we think or the mental level, our psychic in terms of how our beliefs and images and our connection to spiritual. So the, the energy can work and can interact on all of these different the, ener the energy field, as Barbara explains, the energy field is a template for the physical body. Yeah. And the disease, whether it's uh, illness or uh, emotional or psychological or spiritual uh, wandering, uh, are all affected by these energy templates. So when we, when we offer this Reiki energy or at a deeper level, we work with Barbara Brandon's healing science, which allows us to go to the different levels, then we are... Um, working to realign or to remove uh, stagnant energy. And so the energy field is clearer, which can reflect on all these different levels that I talked about. You said so, that uh, everybody feels the energy completely different <laughs> depending on yeah, there, their, yeah, their yes. So path. you know, you, yeah, you can feel it uh, physically, you can feel it through emotions, you can feel it through intuition or the, the feelings uh, from the heart. You can also, from the, you know, the fifth chakra, you can hear the heart, throat chakra. You, can, you might hear voices or you might uh, smell or you might taste things. Uh, or with a third eye, or you might see different things. Some people see the energy field. They see the different colors. They see the chakras. Uh, Barbara could look into the body and see like, a, like you know, like an x-ray. She could see that deep. So there's different ways of seeing. When I work sometimes, I just have a mental picture of where I'm working and I don't always get all that information and sometimes I just know where to work which comes called direct knowing now we all have our different ways of perceiving that you might have two or three ways uh, that you that you Francois are able to define. yeah and so and with practice this uh, because as we practice our own energy field especially if we work on ourselves to get to know ourselves better find out what our blocks are uh, when we contact, the channel gets stronger. And some of these other ways of perceiving might start to develop as well. And, and so uh, those and are the so ways the, that and, we... And so the healing goes on. And so the, uh, is the benefit. Because the, yeah. at the end of the day, this is what we want, isn't it? This is, this is what we want. Now, uh, your question was, uh, you know, what kind of things uh, can I work with? Uh, well, I, you know, um, I've worked with uh, a lot of different people with physical injuries and that have helped. Some I've helped, some have helped a little bit, some less. I've worked often with people uh, having surgery. I, we can work before, during, during, and after the surgery. So before it helps to open the energy field to prepare it for what's coming. Uh, during the operation, we can hold the intention of the, of the healing team and we can work on the operation as the operation is happening because we can be assisted by the psychic surgeons. And after the, the operation, we can help the body to, to heal faster. We can remove the excess anesthetic, for example. We can help the sutures and the skin to kind of come together better, the bones to, to heal faster. The metal that is inserted, we can harmonize it with the body so that there's more uh, right. synchronicity in the healing. So, and all of this can have an effect of possibly reducing the, um, the need for Medicaid pain medication. Right. Uh, we don't prescribe anything because we're not, you know, but, but uh, it may help uh, to reduce the need for it. Yeah. Uh, the person may not have as much pain. The, it will shorten, generally it will shorten the time of, of, uh, of healing. Yeah. Uh, I and, uh, <laughs> yeah. I confirm. And some you confirm. Yeah. I, I look like and sometimes a, I look like not knowing anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you have a lot of experience as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in right. That, yeah. Well, that's a good explanation. That's a good explanation. Yeah. 
and now and sometimes now, and some oh, just one more thing you know sometimes the healing doesn't happen but the person has emotional healing which helps them to have a better transition yeah yes yes that's okay. important to know yes of course yeah, I, re i remember it reminds me once when i was working with somebody who was at home and um he was uh, having some difficulty with the cancer and the last time i went to see him i went to see him and he actually died when i was there and i think he waited till i was there in order for his wife not to be alone when he when he passed away uh, but the the healings that we did together uh, it did help him to pass more harmoniously and his wife also said something about that after i had been there right definitely uh, healing is not what we think ah huh? sometimes healing happen uh we don't know what is the layer that had healed and it's not no it's not, not according no. to us right and sometimes we might just put in a seed that where the healing happens after i always tell my students you know you won't see all the results you won't see all the levels and you, the healing some of it may happen tomorrow and you're not yes. there so let go of results you know clear intention you offer it and that's all you can do i call, i tell you to put air in your in your healing attention intention yeah and breathe yes <laughs> breathing mm. breathing is the twin sister of energy isn't it yes and right. they together uh, and now comes akomi in the middle of that and you have ah. akomi and there is more we'll talk about the other modalities but akomi what is akomi and how did you use it and how do you combine it what you do in energy healing also Okay, Hakomi, I have to say Hakomi is now a, one of my favorite approaches. It's, uh, um, it's called um, assisted, mindfulness-based assisted self-discovery. So in Hakomi, we uh, do little experiments while in a state of kind of inner awareness that help us to discover habits or beliefs that might get in the way of us letting in what's nourishing and causing what we call in Hakomi unnecessary suffering. You know, there's enough suffering in the world, like birth, old age, sickness, and death that we, have, we can't control. And there's suffering that is caused just because of our beliefs about the way the world works. A good example is somebody who is uh, so autonomous that they won't expect anybody to be able to help them. Mm -hmm. So when somebody offers them help, they don't, either don't hear it or they refuse it. So they keep working by themselves and it's, you know, it's kind of creates suffering for them, even though there's nourishment around that could come in. And so in Hakomi, we help a person self-study by doing his little experiments while the person is in a mindful state. And then we access what we call the adaptive con uh, unconscious. That part of us, that kind of, adapts to the situation and makes kind of uh, decisions from old beliefs and habits. And in Hakomi, the experiments are, are, are done in a way to evoke uh, what the resistance and the beliefs so that once they're conscious, we can create a nourishing experience to help that part that was having difficulty have an experience where nourishment is possible and therefore putting that belief to the test, challenging it. And then once you're aware of it and you have an experience of it, you know it's possible and then you can possibly change your habits or start to change your habits. But so Hakomi is- How do you do that? Is that the talk therapy or how do you- No, no. Uh, it's, no, it's not. It's anything but talk th therapy. It's really, um, when you're sitting helping someone to study themselves, you're really aware of their whole way of being. They're, they're nonverbal as well as they're verbal. The speed at which they talk, how they might talk and, and not really look at you, uh, how they might talk and have a certain gesture with their hands all the time. We call that tracking in Hakomi. And so we're watching for those signs we're listening to the story, but we're more interested in the storyteller. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. And we don't really ask questions. 
we contact the experience and if we see something that, or we have a sense that there's a belief there that is unconscious, we'll set up a little experiment with the person and we might say something like, you're a good person or I'll help you. And if the person has a belief that nobody's gonna help them, their first reaction is gonna be no. I'm not a good person or I don't believe you or so, you know, and it's often a surprising thing. And so oh, there's something that has come from the unconscious. The unconscious has given us a gift that we can now do something with. And so once we bring that to awareness, we create an experience where the person is able to have somebody with them who can offer them the nourishment of believing that they're a good person. And we always work in what one of the basis of a, basic skills of Hakomi, or qualities of Hakomi, which is loving presence. So we're sitting with somebody and we're listening in a state of loving presence. And we also are letting ourselves be nourished by the person that's in front of us. But you're not deepens the relationship. Your hands, like in Reiki and in Barbara Brennan, you're not doing tra energy <clears throat> transfer. It's different, right? It's different. It's more, it's, uh, it's more like um, um, uh, helping someone they discover themselves. You could call it therapy. Um, so it, it's, it's a way of helping them uh, to discover how they don't let in what's good. And it's a great setup for energy work to follow because uh, often, I, as you probably know, I combine a lot of the different modalities that I that I've studied in a session. So I might do a little bit of Hakomi and then I might uh, integrate that energetically. But the work we've done with Hakomi has already stirred something up energetically and the energy work can help to deepen it or integrate it and, and help the person uh, Achieve heal from, from that. Yeah. yeah. So you prepare yeah. the terrain and then exactly. and plant the seed. Exactly, yes, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. As if it was not enough, there is EFT. My goodness, another thing, EFT. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, EFT is, uh, EFT, I've used this EFT is something a lot. completely different, huh? Well, yes and no. Uh, Gary Craig, who, uh, who created EFT, uh, which is emotional freedom technique, uh, calls it uh, emotional acupuncture. Yeah. Okay? Emotional acupuncture without needles. And that is also working with uh, beliefs and, uh, but it uses the endpoints of meridians. There's about uh, eight or 12 of them. And, um, and while tapping on them, while holding a thought which is disturbing, and the tapping kind of moves the energy to help uh, it move, even though you're kind of crisp or, or tensed yeah. up when you have this thought, and it kind of dissolves the energy block. So it's been very useful for working with fears and phobias and um, uh, beliefs. Um, strong, and, strong emotions. And, yeah. And, and an interesting thing is uh, when I was practicing uh, my Brennan healing science, uh, I was still wasn't graduated. I started to learn EFT and I would work with EFT with somebody. And then I would take my chakra readings and I would say, wow, EFT is affecting already the chakras. So it, it, like you say, it's preparing the terrain. Yeah. So the EFT, we can, I could, uh, because I use a pendulum to, to uh, read chakras and, and, uh, and I think I developed a, a way of tracking that as well, which we can talk about later. Yes, yes. You, you, you <laughs> but, chakra before and you read the chakra after, then you can observe yeah. if there is a difference. Yeah, and you can do it from session to session and track that uh, graphically or on a table and it, you can see the progress of healing as you... As you um, you work with somebody. And so the EFT already has an effect on the energy field. And it's also another way of preparing the terrain, as you, as you said so well before, preparing the terrain for deeper healing when you actually do the energy work. So these uh, modalities combine really well together. Intermodal. Yeah. Intermodal approach. <laughs> Intermodal approach, yeah. Yes. Combined, yeah. And then you can have a better success. Yeah, uh, success, yeah, the, which, which again, um, I mean, that's the goal, right? It's to help people yeah. 
without having an agenda or without having, but it's nice to have those tools that you can, where you can be with somebody in a loving presence, not forcing anything with the knowledge that healing happens when the conditions are right. And it's an internal thing and that we're all connected, you know, how I am affects you and how you are affects me. And so when you put all those together as including the mind body, you know, um, connection, and you put all that together and you work with it with that, those principles, then you are creating a container in which healing can happen. And then you can use whatever tools are on the shelf that, oh, I think this would be good now to do energy healing or Hakomi might be good here or core energetics where we talk about, you know, the different aspects of the self uh, and tensions in the body uh, or fascia therapy, which is another thing I use to, to work, gives me a physical connection and working with actually the, uh, the, the body uh, has kind of an energetic feel to it as well, but it's, it's different from massage. It's a manipulative therapy. This one is not uh, energy at all. It's a manipulative therapy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is. It's somewhere between, if I had to describe it, somewhere between osteopathy and massage. Right. Uh, it's, it's very, very slow. It's not a very deep massage. It's very uh, um, movement-oriented, but very, very slow movement. So you can penetrate into the body that way as well. So it has kind of that energetic feel. But it also allows, what it allows me is to really have a, uh, a way of actually physically working with the muscles and the bones and the tissue and the fascia. Yeah, yeah, all so, the, mm -hmm. the physical structure. What is mm -hmm. your most uh, memorable result? Because we all have, as healer, few experiences that are, Uh, are attracting our attention or retaining our memory. What is yours? What is your most uh, memorable uh, healing session or healing cases that you had along your very long career? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you might find this one a little strange, but um, you know, in the COVID, we've been working a lot with this 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 uh, medium, right? The, the Zoom. Zoom. And I have been work. I've been working a lot with clients. I worked with a client uh, not that long ago, maybe a year ago or so. And I was, we were doing some Hakomi. And in Hakomi, we can uh, do something called taking over, which is taking over or something for the client. And the client was um, in, in a place where she felt very vulnerable and scared. And I was working with her and um, I was using a Hakomi approach at that, at that time. And I said to her, okay, um, let's try an experiment. I'm going to stand in front of you with the camera and I will turn away from the camera and I'll put my hands out like this. So I'm, I'm standing on like this and she's behind me and watching me. So she sees my back and she sees my hands like this. And I said, as I would do this, I'll protect you. I'll make sure nothing bad happens to you. And she all of a sudden felt very young, but also protected. Whereas she had not had that when she was young. And so, uh, you know, the, the child state comes up in, in, that, in that moment. So we work with the child and we give her something that was missing And it's still missing today. She was always felt very vulnerable, very. And after that session, she wrote back to me the next day and she said, you know, I think that was the most powerful healing I've ever had. And yet we were working at a distance. And after that, we proceeded. After that, we did that experiment. I proceeded to do an energy healing uh, by distance after that. And so the two modalities together, the Hakomi and the energy work, helped her have an experience that, was very profound for her. And I think some of the other, uh, this same client, but also other clients where I've worked with um, operations. One was a thyroid yeah. removal, um, working before, during, and after. And this particular client had had half of her thyroid removed the year before without any energy work. And then half, the other half, we did energy work and she said that it was an amazing difference in the pain she felt, the recovery time, 
uh, it was so much better with the support of the energy healing. And I've had the same experience with uh, hip replacements as well. It, it heals faster. Um, so I guess those are the kind of the memorable things that come to mind when you ask that question. Yes, yes, yes. I can relate to that because also I gave some remote healing during an operation and not the patient. The doctor told the patient that he couldn't believe how short his operation was. And she said that uh, she received a distant he uh, energy healing session. And instead of rejecting, he, he was asking, requesting some information. That's, that's one of the most interesting part of the world yeah. that we live in. It's changing. It's not like before. She had, yes, had yes. that operation, no? Yeah. You cannot yeah. not have it. You have to have right. this operation. But he said that the operation, according to the average duration, was much shorter. And it made, wow. made him very happy. And the patient Wonderful. also. Yes, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> so, yeah. now, you were a healer. You, you are a teacher and you are an author. You decided to self-edit a book. You wrote a book. Can you talk Again. about it? <laughs> And how, why, did you, why did you write a book about Reiki? Why? What is your motivation? Yeah, an another book on Reiki. Eh? <laughs> yes, I, exactly. Thank you for saying. <laughs> yeah, another, another book on Reiki. Another book on question. Reiki. Ah. <laughs> Do we need another book on Reiki? Yeah, my gosh, you know. And I, I never thought I would write, ever write a book of any kind. Uh, but I was seeing somebody who was helping me uh, connect with my guides. And she kept telling me, you need to write, you need to write. What am I going to write about? So I said, okay, um, well, I can write a book on Ricky and make it a, a compendium of, uh, of people's experience on all the different things they, they use it. So I thought, okay, that's an idea. Now what am I going to do? Where am I going to write this book? I knew I had to get out of my surroundings in order to have the time to write and to be able to concentrate. So I started looking for places around Montreal and uh, asking around. And um, I had a few offers around here. I had somebody offer me their house outside of Paris where I could have gone to write. And then I, I, I kept meeting people that had come back from Bali and yeah. in the trip that I, the two year trip that I did. And, and I remember Bali as being one of the most beautiful exotic places, yeah. that, you know, that I had known. <laughs> I was about so to I, say you were, you were offered an apartment in Montreal and you chose Bali. Wow. <laughs> in, 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 in Paris, in Paris. Ah, uh, Paris. Also. Paris. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I decided to, to look into, uh, and I looked, uh, I found a little uh, uh, bungalow by, by the beach in the, on the island of Lombok, which is right next to Bali. And so I rented it for a month and I, I, I wrote. So as I was writing, you know, before I had asked a bunch of people to see if they could give me some testimonials of their experience. And as I started writing the book, you know, I, my, my focus changed a little bit because when I started writing and reading about all the different uh, effects that people have felt from taking the course, being initiated in this modality, which is so easy to learn and so accessible, I started to see just how this transformation that happens from taking this course has such an imp impact on people's lives because I see it when people come from level one, they come to level two and they tell me about their experience and level three, et cetera, and it really opens them up. So I decided to write mostly about how Ricky is a powerful catalyst for personal transformation and healing. As opposed to, you know, yes, it's, it's great for working with people. And so as I'm writing this book, I'm sitting in Bali, I sat there for a month and I wrote my book. Uh, on the experience and and it was uh, so inspiring uh, to, to have that focus and to to write the book and and also I wanted to write the book not just what what Reiki is but I wanted to put in my own experience of the principles of Reiki uh, I wanted to put my own experience of what it is to work with people and what to look for and mm -hmm. so I gave it a very practical uh, also you know, what do you, what do you say to people when they come? Uh, how do you stand? What's the best way of, of connecting with them? Uh, how do you take care of your client without, uh, what are boundaries? You know, what kind of boundaries 
And then how do you develop your practice? What can you do? And what happens to you once you've been initiated at the master level? So I wanted to put all that in the book as opposed to simply what's your Reiki and the things you use it for. And at the end of the book, I also put an appendix in where I talk about all the different modalities that I've studied and all of the ones that I'm aware of that I use but have not necessarily uh, graduated from. And then a bunch of books as well. So it became a... A, a, a book that can be used for people who are curious, for people that are practicing, for people that are teaching, and for people that are looking for other ways to expand their consciousness. Wow. And so in, in the end, it, came, it became a, a different book on Reiki. Ah, phew, I'm very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's available in French and Spanish and English. Yes, very good. As an e-book very or a good. print book, so, yeah. Uh, while you talked about it, uh, you, you're talking about the, um, the changing experiment of what Reiki brings to you. Myself, I could testimony about that, but uh, don't we all look for self-healing before we look for healing the other? Uh, was it your case? Were you looking for self-healing when you started to, to learn Reiki? Yes, I, I've always taken all of the courses that I've taken, I've taken because they have really inspired me to look deeper into myself and to get to know myself better. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of my, uh, I think my beliefs was that I'm not a good enough person and I need to work on myself. So that, it's a false belief, but it, <laughs> it, it served me and that it got me into all of these different modalities. But you, you can uh, find a job of people like you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there are some students that come because they want to learn Reiki so they can help others only to discover how much it helps them. Mm. And so uh, often, uh, often people will say that after their first level, you know, I came here because I wanted to help my mom. And wow, I was really surprised at how much I got out of it. Yes. And so, and so, uh, and there's a lot of surprises in that, in that journey that we undertake, isn't there? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. So you want to write another book about Reiki? <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, um, I, I, I've been thinking about writing something about the whole process of, you know, going from wound to self-responsibility. Yeah. And, and to, you know, taking, taking charge of your life. From yeah. The early wounds to the early wounds to what creates our beliefs and how we can work through that to eventually take responsibility. And so that was one subject that I wouldn't mind writing about, although I haven't thought about it too much. You didn't talk about too much, but there is a yeah. lot to say about healing because healing is something that uh, triggers us. It, the, it goes beyond taking tablets and uh, medicine, yet we need to take them. But healing is something that, uh, well, in fact, how would you define healing? How would you define what is he, what is healing? Well, um, I think we could call it a return to wholeness, right? right? Returning, returning, realigning with with who we are, and uh, living our life as the person that we are. Uh, because a lot of us live for approval, we live for performance, we live uh, to please others. Uh, you know, and we, we forget, we forget who we are, we forget what we want, we forget what we need. So that's a constant search, I think. So to me, healing is coming back to that. So we can live in a way which is nourishing for us and therefore nourishing for others, as opposed to good for others and maybe good for us in the returns. It's kind of a give and take. Right. But we, we ne need to, to get to know our needs and, and take responsibility for them. Uh, and I think a lot of the healing has to do with that. Yeah. If not all of them. But yeah. Yeah. That is the, the basis. Wow. So coming back, coming back to wholeness, I think, is, is what healing is. Yes, yes, yes. Of course. Of course. Well, that was a fantastic moment together. Thank you so much. I came back to my wholeness just right now. <laughs> I'm very happy. Well, 
Well, yeah. Thank you for for suggesting this. Um, I'm very honored that you would uh, that you would want yeah. to to do that with me, and uh, it's a it was fun, you know. Yes. Yes. When we don't have a prepared agenda, you never know what's going to come up. So we have to trust that whatever comes up is is great. This was fabulous. I really enjoyed it. So thank you again. Very good. So goodbye <laughs> for now, and we'll see each other very soon when I go back to Montreal. Okay. Yes. Please. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 -bye. <laughs>